Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mormonish. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Landon. And we're already laughing because we have Cultural Hall with us, who makes us laugh all the time. How are you, Cult? <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. This is great. What I love about Cult is it's like, we're like, should we do an episode? Yeah, let's just do, you know what? Let's just call Cult. It's like literally 10 minutes later, we're all sitting here. Mm -hmm. just, that's the, that's just the beauty laughing. of living on the East Coast is that, you know, late night, I can just do my thing and hop on with you. It works. That's right. That's right. The family goes to bed and the earphones mm -hmm. go on and, and who yeah. knows what's going to come out of our mouths, right? So <laughs> but we are excited to have Cult. And why don't you spend like one second telling us you have just launched a new channel tons of contents already up to a thousand subscribers give us your pitch in one second yeah. for our viewers because it's such similar content we'd love for everybody that subscribes to mormonish to please go over and find cultural hall yeah, that'd be awesome honestly i think they probably already have rebecca because you've have. done so much promoting which i'm really grateful for but yeah it's um if you want to deconstruct with humor i'm kind of the place to go that's that's my forte um, I do parody songs that I try to make about funny topics. Um, and now that I'm over on YouTube, I've tried to get into longer form content. So I've got a really funny about 20 minute episode on Brad Wilcox that's worth giving a watch. Um, and I've also started a series where I hate watch some of the Faithful Mormon podcasts and then just kind of clap back at them. I call it hate watch with Colch, which is kind of fun. And people enjoy that. I had a lot of, uh, I watched one that Ward Radio did where they kind of attacked Haley Rawl, who does the Girls Camp podcast. So I, I fired back. Haley actually saw it and then like promoted the SHIT out of me, which was awesome. So I got a nice boost. And then I got a huge boost from all this Nemo stuff yeah. from him speaking at the Fairview uh, yeah. City Council meeting. So it's things are going really well. Um, and I've got a lot of good stuff coming. So, you know, go check it out. That's awesome. That's right. There's nothing more entertaining than hate watch, right? It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's not about hating anyone. It's just and that's a term for exactly. when you watch something that you wouldn't normally watch that you don't like. That's right. And I do and perhaps, it. I do it for you people. I do it for you. That's right. And perhaps someone else is hating a little bit. And so then you kind of put it back to right and you say, hey, let's not do that. And let's check this out. So, yep. Awesome. We'll put some links in the show notes, of course, of how you can find Colch, but you can just look up Cultural Hall. So, all right. Well, the topic that we're going to cover today is the Book of Mormon. And of course, we've done a lot of episodes on the Book of Mormon. We've done some scholarly episodes. We've had some real hard hitting scholars, haven't we, Landon? <laughs> we have. We've had a lot of that. Uh, but this is more of a laid back, fun edition. That's right. Nice. That's right. And and I'm kind of calling it in line with the Oprah meme, you get a Book of Mormon and you get a Book of Mormon and you get a Book of Mormon and all of you get Book of Mormons, right? Because if you go to the next slide, there was a recent article, it was a couple months ago, but they brought to our attention in the church news that the church has distributed 200 million copies of the Book of Mormon. And I'm guessing Kulch and Landon, return missionaries. You're a return missionary, aren't you, Kulch? I think you are. I am. Yes. Yep. You have contributed to this number. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel I, fine. It's whatever. I, I think I contributed about 10. Well, you were <laughs> in nice. Indiana. Nobody wanted yeah. it. <laughs> And and that's what we're going to talk about because distributes 200 millionth, that almost makes it sound like, you know, people requested them, people wanted them. That's not really the case. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Ways in which Book of Mormons are given out kind of unsolicited to people, even though I didn't go on a mission, I have a couple stories to share. And then we're going to talk about some celebrities and notable people that are just handed Book of Mormons. And and I don't know, did they join the church or not? We'll have to find that out. So this will be an inch. Once I started looking into this, I found quite a number of people that you'd be surprised and the story behind them being handed a Book of Mormon. So, isn't, it, isn't it interesting that they know exactly how many Book of Mormons they gave out, but they don't know how much money they have? Or how many members they have. Exactly. Or how many members. <laughs> that is, I hadn't thought about that. It's like so well, they, they say they know, but you know. <laughs> you know, it's selective statistics, right? But it is very mm -hmm. exciting to be able to say 200 million. So Landon, why don't you just read this little background on the very beginnings of the Book of Mormon? The first pages of the Book of Mormon began rolling off a Smith patented improved press in 1829, and Joseph Smith secured a a copyright for it in June 1829, but there's a good reason it's con it's considered to have been published in 1830. 
It took nine months to publish the first 5,000 copies on the tiny hand lever press. After all, the lever was pressed down once for every eight pages, and the total order included about 3 million pages. Today, at 200 million copies, the Book of Mormon appears to trail only the Bible, the Quran, quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong, <laughs> Don Quixote, and a tale of two cities. It is in the same ballpark now as the Little Prince, according to Wikipedia. No single authoritative source is compiling this information, especially since some of these books and religious texts have been published across centuries where no figures are available. And this is from the Church News. So, of course, that's why they had the, the lowest disclaimer. But yes, go Don Quixote and go Tale of Two Cities. I would gladly hand those books out for sure. So I don't know too much about the other ones, but I thought that was interesting. Hmm. And again, I doubt that these other books have an organization telling people to pass them out. You must hand out Tale of Two Cities, right? So probably the Bible and Quran have a few missionaries, yes. but uh... I, I'm mm -hmm. guessing they do. Yep. So this next picture, of course, AI, whenever I tell AI to make Mormons, they look like that, right? They just have this weird, <laughs> I don't know why. It's not me doing it. I just say Mormons. But the reason that they're on an airplane. Um, the woman is on a, in the gym and they're pa passing out, passing out copies of the Book of Mormon. I always remember my dad. Now I never went on a mission, but my dad was the kind of guy he traveled for business a lot. And he always put several copies of the Book of Mormon in his briefcase. I would watch him do it when I was a kid, because as he traveled, he traveled internationally for business and he was always handing out the pass along cards or the copies of the Book of Mormon. And he would always come home and tell us about the people that he had talked to and the Book of Mormons that he had handed out. And I was a super shy kid. And I just remember thinking, I hope I never have to hand out a book. That sounds so <laughs> scary. Probably the reason I never went on a mission. Did you guys ever on business trips hand out Book of Mormons or did, you, did your parents? This was a huge thing in like the 70s and 80s. Travel, take your Book of Mormon with you. I, I never did, but I always take it to the gym. Uh, I just like to show it around and, you know, I put them up and make it look like I got some pecs up there and stuff. Uh, and, and I find it. Look at that guy in the gray shirt. He's really checking her out with that Book of Mormon. So uh, I find I find the girls love checks. it when you have a Book of Mormon in your hand and just show it around. That's so funny. I, you know, I had missionary moments where you strike up a conversation and maybe talk about the church, but I didn't keep a Book of Mormon with me to try to give to people. Um, even when I was a missionary, like on my flight over to the Philippines and my flight home, I didn't care. I know you're supposed to have missionary moments, but I was tired. I was excited to go home. Like I, I didn't care. So I no, I didn't. Isn't do any that, of that no. isn't that the worst when you get on an airplane? You're walking down the aisle and you look, and there's 19 missionaries on the plane, and you go, "Oh shit!" Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you look like yeah. an apostate, like you do, Landon. You know they're all going to be coming. Going, at I'm going to sit by sure. one of them. I know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I read a post a month or so ago where it was on a faithful site where they said I was on an airplane and I saw someone coming home from their mission and I saw them talking to somebody who was seemed interested and that missionary never got out of Book of Mormon. It was like calling him out and I'm thinking, just what you said, Colts, that poor kid is probably exhausted if he's coming mm -hmm. home. If he's on his way out, maybe he doesn't even know what to do, but I just thought people are watching, you know, and I never, I've never had the experience of giving out a Book of Mormon. I did have somebody that I was dating in college use the Book of Mormon as kind of a pickup line. He said, think of me as the Book of Mormon. I'm not asking you to read the whole thing. Just maybe flip a few of my pages. Never knew what that meant. Didn't really date him, but I thought, what a great pickup line. Just flip a few of my pages. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, so I think probably a lot of our viewers and listeners can relate to family members or they themselves feeling the pressure to keep Book of Mormons with them and to pass out Book of Mormons. I mean, it's one of the now fourfold missions of the church, right? To mm -hmm. to proselyte, basically. So isn't it? I Am think, I wrong on that? Sometimes I forget yeah, what they are. You want to spread the gospel. I think people... Yeah. They may not bring extra ones to give out, but I know people will bring their scriptures mm -hmm. and they're on a plane in someplace public and they like to get them out and start reading that. Hopefully someone will notice yeah, the and then maybe strike up a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And I think as we've seen recently on Book of Mormon Central, there's a series called Marvelous Work, The Greatness of the Evidence. And there's at least one segment in each of these episodes where someone has discovered the Book of Mormon, someone goes to great lengths to try to find the Book of Mormon. And to them, that is evidence, just how desirable the book itself is. And mm -hmm. that's that's something they consider evidence, which I think is interesting. So, all right, let's go to our next 
picture. This was something very interesting. Landon, I know your family did this. Do you want to describe what this is? Maybe read this and tell us about this. Yeah, the Family to Family Book of Mormon program, which was begun on a limited scale more than 20 years ago, has gained considerable considerable impetus in recent years. To learn more about this program and what it is doing for both members and missionaries, the Ensign spoke with Robert H. Burton, director of the program, and Vernon Proctor, assistant yeah. director. So Proctor's this is an done older an examination. Article. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is an older article because they're still calling it the Ensign. So I think the program actually was in the late 70s and 80s. Exactly. What is the Family to Family Book of Mormon program? Brother Burton, the Family to Family Book of Mormon program is designed to encourage members of the church to strengthen their testimonies through daily study of the Book of Mormon and to share their testimonies in writing with neighbors and people throughout the world. Families or individuals provide funds to purchase copies of the Book of Mormon and write their testimonies regarding the truthfulness of the book. These testimonies, along with a photograph of the person or his family, are affixed to the inside front cover of each Book of Mormon, and the books are then distributed to friends and neighbors or to investigators and missionary contacts. Wow. And what's the real story behind that, Landon? And then I'll ask both of you if your families ever did anything like that. Well, it, it appears that uh, they were going to a new edition of the Book of Mormon, but they had cases and cases of Book of Mormons that, uh, you know, old Book of Mormons that needed to be uh, gotten rid of. So they started this program and sold them to all the families and told them to write their uh, testimony in it and send them out to the missionaries or give them I don't I don't know anyone who gave them to their neighbors or friends. They always sent them to the missionaries <laughs> uh, to give out. Uh, they, they had a testimony as long as they didn't have to give it out is kind of the way I saw it. But but I remember we photocopied our family photograph and we had a testimony and we glued them on the inside front cover and then sent the box out. I may have even taken them with me on my mission. I'm trying to remember how how that worked. But uh, yeah, that that was the program. And it, it's funny to me, you give 10% of your money to the church. The church has billions of dollars, and yet they ask the families to buy the Book of Mormons. They never spend any of the money they collect on any other programs. They always ask for more. <laughs> they don't have to. Did your family ever do that, Colt? Or are you a little younger? Maybe missed it? I'm I'm slightly younger than you guys, just by a little bit. So I don't remember this program being a big thing when I was growing up, but we definitely had a lot of Book of Mormons in the house. Um, I didn't realize they were encouraged to put a picture of their family in it. Like yeah. that to me was bizarre. Yeah. Because that's hard. It was, it was hard to get a picture back in the 80s or the late 70s. You had to take it. You had to go get it developed, yeah. print it out, yeah. and then and tape then you, it then in. Then you so photocopied like, it when the new, those new fangled photocopy machines that you could go down, <laughs> ring, ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and I was trying to, I don't remember that program specifically, but I do remember my family giving out Book of Mormons to neighbors. My parents were the ones that would rent the film strip from the church library and invite neighbors over. And even when I was very wow. little, I knew... <laughs> I knew to be embarrassed by that. I knew it was awkward, you know, to bring the kids I play with over to my house. We're all dressed up in Sunday clothes. We're sitting there and there's the beep, men search for happiness, you know? And then whenever <laughs> they'd watch the film strip, the men, of course, my parents would hand them a button. I'm just like, don't you know what, where you eat, right? I knew that mm -hmm. even as a kid, don't, don't harass the neighbors because then I have to live that down. So I think one family actually did join at some point, but it very quickly left. So I've just always been really reticent and nervous about sharing the gospel, which I always thought I was really shy, but it was really, I was not on board with the message. Even when I was a kid, I knew. What do you guys think about hotel room Book of Mormons, right? You guys all travel around. Do you open the drawer and always look for a Book of Mormon and see if one is there? There's always a Bible. Do you ever have you ever found yeah. a Book of Mormon? Oh yeah, yeah, I found the Book of Mormon. You go to the Marriotts and you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you turn on the TV and you say, "Oh, porn or the Book of Mormon? Which yeah. one?" Uh, it's the best of both worlds. You can do both at once. You can do both, Landon. <laughs> you can do both. <laughs> The Book of Mormon. You feel was guilty free, from the porn. <laughs> that's right. And then you Mormon. read the Book of Mormon. That's right. And have you noticed, Colch? I've seen posts about people, you know, saying my work here is done or whatever, and they'll, they're showing that they're writing information inside of Book of Mormons in hotel rooms. Have you know, like truth 
claims and things like that, trying to kind of warn anybody who might pick it up. I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, when I've stayed at Marriott's, I definitely see a Book of Mormon in there. I haven't seen it at any other hotels, but I've definitely seen people over on Twitter, sometimes posting pictures of they stayed at a Marriott and there was a Book of Mormon. So they went ahead and wrote their ex-Mormon testimony in it for (laughs) whoever finds it. Don't you ever think about those people? They're like tired. They open a drawer. They're like, what's this? What's this? I mean, I wonder if they ever go to the links that they share. I don't know. It's a funny, it's a funny thing. So, all right. Well, we're going to talk about uh, this whole concept just got me thinking about people that Book of Mormons are given to. And of course, the number one story that you hear all the time is about Elvis and the Book of Mormon. And you've heard that Elvis got a Book of Mormon. There's different stories about who gave it to him. And you've heard when he died, the Book of Mormon was on his bedside. I've heard that lots of places are highlighted in it. I've heard that notes are written on the side. Lisa Marie could really use this. (laughs) You You hear all these all these exciting things, these celebrity experiences. So I found a couple articles. One was in um, LDS Daily Living and one was in the Tribune, just kind of going through some of these rumors about people that have received them. So this one was about Elvis. Colts, do you want to read this? Sure. Uh, Elvis didn't relish his title of king, as he said, there is only one king, and that is Jesus Christ. Deeply religious and a heavy reader of spiritual topics, Elvis often spoke with his close friend and bodyguard, Ed Parker, about spiritual topics. Parker, a Latter-day Saint, reportedly gave Elvis several books of Latter-day Saint authors, and Elvis received a copy of the Book of Mormon from Olive Osmond, who had several close ties to the rock icon. I'm guessing that's Donnie's mom. It is. It's Donnie Marie's mom. And I actually have a friend who was in a trumpet band that played with Liberace, who played with Elvis, who was there when she handed him the Book of Mormon. So if we count that as secondhand, he told me he saw it. But yeah, so Elvis did receive a Book of Mormon. And yes, yes, Landon. (laughs) Did he say thank you? Thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you very much. I think he might. That was a really good impression, Landon. I thought it was pretty good. But there was a Book of Mormon that was even in, I don't remember, I don't think it was in the church museum, but it was somewhere that the church had that did have notes and things inscribed on and highlighting. And so that's where that rumor came from. But that book turned out to be a forgery. That was not true. Those were Mm. not Elvis's notes. But he did have a copy of the Book of Mormon, whether or not it was close to him when he died. And I don't believe he joined the church ever. Because as he said, there's only one king, that's Jesus Christ, right? I mean, he was deeply <laughs> religious. He sang all kinds of gospel music, but, you know, Mormons have to mourn. So when all of Osmond mm-hmm. and he's interacting with Donnie Marie, they've got to pass on the Book of Mormon to him. I so. can just see his Book of Mormon on the nightstand with all the op- op- opioids. <laughs> oh, now, that, that was his medicine, Landon. Oh, that was he his never, medicine. never thought okay. he was addicted to opioids. In fact, he was on a, a task force uh, with with the government, with the president to stop kids, keep them away from opioids. He never believed he was addicted. It was just his medicine, which is actually really tragic. You know, yeah. the more I learn about mm-hmm. Elvis, it is a very tragic story because he was so wildly talented. So oh, anyway, incredibly now, you know, talented. Yeah. yeah, no, he was incredible. So I, I a took book. a course. I took a course in college on Elvis. It was like oh. an easy A plus, but it was really, it was really cool. I learned a lot about him. Yeah. No, and he's the movie a is fantastic uh, with the, uh, the the movie where he's with uh yeah wife. what's the name of the that recent one? one priscilla the recent yeah, one priscilla, that, came out that was really yeah. good movie it yeah. was really good there's a lot more to him than we think so so anyway yes we'll say yes he did receive a book of mormon but we'll say no don't believe he ever joined the church from that book of mormon and don't even know that he read it so there you go All right, let's move along and see who else was given a Book of Mormon. And I think this is just scratching the surface. I thought this was interesting. Land, did you want to read this one? No way. Yeah, no, I know. (laughs) In 2012, Johnny Depp was in Creed Company filming The Lone Ranger when he came across two missionaries and asked them about their name tags. The missionaries asked Depp if he would accept a Book of Mormon. He said, sure, and then autographed another one they had as well. So there it is, Johnny Depp. I didn't know that, but he was given, well, they asked him if he would take it, I guess. He was given a Book of Mormon. What do you think about that, Johnny Depp cult? That's awesome. Like Johnny Depp's a really interesting actor. He's just an interesting person in general. So yeah, um, yeah, I think he's kind of weird enough that he'd be like, (laughs) oh, what is this? Yeah. You know, 
most people wouldn't want to talk to Mormon missionaries. You see them coming and you turn around and head the other way. But yeah. he's like, tell me about yourselves. Yeah. No, Plus he played a pirate. So he's kind of got the Captain Kid sort of connection. Yeah. He's looking at the parlay, the rules of parlay in the Book of Mormon. See if they mm -hmm. That's match right. up. That's yeah. right. So again, I guess we can say yes, received a Book of Mormon. We have documentation there, but not confirmed whether or not he has become a Mormon. And I don't think that he has. So, but I guess you have to respect somebody that you can tell it means something to them and they want to give it to you. I mean, most of us would just say, thank you very much. You know, we would not, you wouldn't slam them or anything. You just know that it meant something to them and you'd accept it as awkward as it might be, depending on the circumstance. I think most people are respectful of somebody else's deeply held beliefs. Mm -hmm. so, all right, let's see who else. And I'll read this one. Oh, here we go. Muhammad Ali, everybody. There he is. Um, Latter-day Saint Bob Wilkie saw Ali in a Dallas airport. After a friendly discussion, Wilkie handed the boxer a personalized copy of the Book of Mormon. In return, Ali gave Wilkie an autographed What is Islam? <laughs> <laughs> pamphlet nice. about his own religion. I'll read your book, Ali told him, if you read mine. And I think that's fair. And I think that's what everybody should do. You know, if somebody, you should hand them your own. <laughs> right copy of whatever because yeah he was he was he belonged to the he was is um and uh, what am i trying to say he He's belonged islamic. to the islamic faith yes and so mm -hmm. he wanted to share that too so i thought that was great but then i thought okay so if he does read the book of mormon and he does join the church he's going to have to change his you know, float like a butterfly, sting like a deseret, right? Because that's honeybee. <laughs> and I don't know that oh, that yeah. rhymes with any of it. So that's going to, it doesn't, it doesn't roll off the tongue, like no. float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, you know, it, it doesn't work. So I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Colch? I was going to say taper, but tapers don't sting. So yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, But yeah, I think he, he handled it the right way. It was kind uh -huh. of a quid pro quo moment. Like yep. I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. Yep. Um, and that's probably the way to go. Yeah, it is. And I don't know if Bob ever read his pamphlet on Islam, but, you know, you got to respect what somebody gives you. What do you think, Landon? Uh, I'm glad it wasn't Mike Tyson. He'd bite his ear off. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, there is that. There but is maybe that. Mike Tyson's yet to come. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, but think about this story. He's in an airport again. Okay. Back in the day, you have the Book of Mormon in an airport and you're, you know, handing it out. So. It's kind of different now. I think there isn't as much travel for business. Everybody's on a Zoom. It's harder to give somebody on a Zoom meeting a Book of Mormon, right? You just kind of hold it up. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you send them a PDF copy. Yeah, maybe. you send them a PDF of the Book of Mormon. That's right. All right. Let's go to our next slide. I think it's Colts' turn to read. Oh, look at this. This wow. is Mark okay. Twain. He had quite a lot to say about the Book of Mormon. This is the chloroform and print guy. That's right. All right. The celebrated author Mark Twain, whose real name was Samuel Clemens, gave a caustic but comic review uh, of the book in his travel novel, Roughing It, in which he also talked about a visit with Brigham Young. He obtained his copy in a visit to Salt Lake City. It is chloroform and print, Twain wrote. If Joseph Smith uh, composed this book, the act was a miracle, keeping awake while he did it at any rate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he knew Smith said he translated it from ancient records, and the work of translating was equally a miracle for the same reason. <laughs> that is a very I, I love quote. the yeah, I love the chloroform in print yep. uh quote from Mark Twain. Yeah, it just Spot means that we're gonna put you to sleep, right? You just can't mm -hmm. even keep reading. But he actually got his copy from Brigham. Well, it didn't say from Brigham Young, although I would imagine Brigham Young might have given him one, but it does say he got it in Salt Lake City when he had a visit with Brigham mm -hmm. Young. So yeah, I he didn't definitely met with him. Yeah. 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 I think that's great. So, but yeah, he has some of the more famous quotes about the book and he was a contemporary, you know, it was back in the day. So he would know any thoughts on that. Landon? No, if anyone would know good literature, it would be Mark Twain and he it didn't would. find it. So <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't. So, all right, let's see who else. And I think it's Landon's turn to look at Oh, oh this is on more Twain. on Mark Twain. I forgot I gave him two slides. Here we go. Keep going. Twain wrote that whenever Smith found his speech growing too modern, which was about every sentence or two, he ladled in a few such scriptural phrases as exceeding sore, mm -hmm. and it came to pass, etc., and made things satisfactory again. And it came to pass was his pet. If he had left that out, his Bible would have been only a pamphlet. <laughs> Even he noticed it. <laughs> 
Uh, they, you know, they they did that last Book of Mormon episode on Don Quixote and tried to make it sound how, you know, what great literature it was that yeah. they strangely didn't make any comparisons with Mark Twain. Well, no, they did on that little, didn't they do on that little dot thing? Uh, I think they did. They, yeah, we're talking about, again, Book of Mormon Central and yeah. the Marvelous Work. Mm -hmm. They did an episode about what great literature the Book of Mormon was, mm -hmm. and they compared it to all different authors, but they did not bring up this quote or anything. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Of course not. Yep. He concluded his chapter on the book writing, the Mormon Bible is rather stupid and tiresome to read, <laughs> but there is nothing vicious in its teachings. Its code of morals is unobjectionable. It is smouched from the smooch, New Testament. Maybe. Smooch, smooch yeah. maybe, from the New Testament and no yeah. credit given. Yeah, so he saw it right there. I mean, things are borrowed, massive passages from other scripture. And also the idea, I love it, when it starts to sound too modern, he just throws something in, exceeding sore. Mm -hmm. It came to pass. You know, it's it's a tactic. And he saw it very clearly. So I love Mark Twain. Read everything he's ever written. I love it. All right. Um, I'll read this one. Leo Tolstoy talking of another incredible author who we've all read um, a lot of his works. He received a copy from Susa Young Gates. Isn't that interesting? An activist daughter of Brigham Young. And it is still in a museum at his old estate. Now, every member of missionary, right? Susa Young Gates, incredible. Uh, the museum curators say that Tolstoy wrote in his diary that she had sent him the book and that he had read it. Okay, we have a confirmation mm. that he read it. Um, Andrew Dickinson White, a co-founder of Cornell University, wrote that Tolstoy later told him, if Mormonism is able to endure and modified until it reaches the third and fourth generation, it is destined to become the greatest power the world has ever known. That is the often that is often quoted in a variety of Latter-day Saint books and talks. Huh. But again, it says endure unmodified. And that didn't happen from day one, right? It was modified about every 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It's constantly being modified. Yep, I gotta, yep, I gotta imagine Tolstoy took the Book of Mormon and went, "Man, that's awful thin." <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. He, yeah, I'm sure he did. That's right. So, but we do have it confirmed that he actually read it. So I do not believe he ever became a Mormon. Also, Mark Twain, I do not believe ever became a Mormon. So, I guess it just shows you can pass the book out. You can lead a horse to the Book of Mormon, but you cannot make him partake or join. Something like that. All right, let's see who else. Oh, this is a good one. Colt, you want to read this? Yeah, Rain Wilson's awesome. Yeah, Rain Wilson, is. a member of what is the Baha'i Baha faith, yeah. is best known for playing Dwight Schrute on the Office TV series. He posted a picture of female Latter-day Saint missionaries on his Instagram account in 27 saying, I was visited by some very nice Mormon missionary sisters this morning. The missionaries told LDS Living Magazine that Rain was in his yard and called them over to his fence as they walked nearby. He told them he already had a Book of Mormon and had read part of it. The missionaries reported he had positive things to say about it and the church. Oh, that's interesting. That's kind of cool. Yeah, well, he's he, a nice he guy. He called them over. Yeah. Exactly. And again, you see him walk and you're like, hey, hey, kid. I mean, I think we all have that urge when you see missionaries. You're like, oh, they're so cute. They're just little kids. Let's talk to them. Mm -hmm. They need a glass of water. You know, they're not <laughs> going to be mean. So, and it says he already had one. So, and he'd read part of it. Well, there you go. That's cool. I know. It is cool. I thought that was good. But again, I don't think I've heard that he's joined although he's aware of the Book of Mormon. so And there is a picture on his Instagram of the sisters. I just didn't have a chance to grab it, but it's really cute. And I'm sure that was part of their homecoming talks, right? Because they were they were mm -hmm. home already. It was 2017. Yeah. They're like, we tracked it out, Rain Wilson. <laughs> yeah, every missionary that... wants a cool story. Exactly. Yeah. Anyone famous automatically makes the church mad. Oh, a famous person said Talk something us. nice about oh. us. We've yeah. got to send it out to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what I thought was so interesting is that all these stories are stories of, you know, they were just given the book and that's almost enough. It's like you're saying there's a chance he accepted the book. Maybe it means something. Maybe he likes us. Yeah. It's an interesting mindset. I think that in, in the LDS mindset, just accepting the book means you know, favorable means you might entertain it. There's mm -hmm. a chance. So that's interesting, I think. And it's it's a big get for them. Any celebrities yep. they get, yep. they always promote it and make a huge yep. deal out of it. Yep. That is unless that celebrity then steps away from the church. And right. then they quickly distance themselves and eventually usually vilify, which is really sad. I was gonna I say David Archuleta is one of the most recent mm -hmm. examples of that. And I always think that when they prop up a celebrity i'm thinking oh but the higher you prop them 
you know, the mm-hmm. more they're going to fall and the members are going to be really disappointed. So I was uh, going to say they break out the pitchforks yeah. on social media. Oh, when they yeah. Leave. Yep, for sure. Yep. There are different examples of that all over. All right. What do you think of this one, Landon? <laughs> you want me to read that? Yeah, of course. Okay. When Arizona governor and Latter-day Saint Evan Meekham met with Reverend Jesse Jackson in 1987 to discuss keeping Martin Luther King Day as a holiday, Meekham not only gave Jackson a copy of the Book of Mormon, he committed him to reading it because there's nothing Jesse Jackson wants more than a 1987 copy of the Book of Mormon about pure and delightsome people. That's true. If you were <laughs> to white, read it closely. White and delight some people. Yeah. Yes, white and delight some. And how <laughs> they will become more white if he's more righteous. Yeah, they hadn't taken that part out yet. They nope. hadn't changed it or changed, morphed the meaning into just pure and holy as opposed mm-hmm. to actual white and dark skin. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. But they, they look pretty chummy in this picture. And I'm not sure how you would commit Jesse Jackson to reading a Book of Mormon, but he must have used the commitment pattern, right? You guys know that right. from the mission that you- Will you read the Book of Mormon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Will you read the Book of Mormon? Yep. And will you pray about it? That's probably what he said. So interesting. Boy, we never knew any of these people, huh? The Book of Mormon is out there. Here's an older one. Um, sometimes sharing a Book of Mormon can make a church member um, wax poetic, as it literally did with one of the faith's most famous female leaders. Lorenzo Snow, then an apostle, was granted an audience with England's Queen Victoria in 1841 and presented her with a richly bound copy of the Book of Mormon. In return, she autographed one of Snow's papers. Snow's famous sister, Eliza R. Snow, who would lead the Church's Relief Society and was a poet and writer of hymns and wife of Joseph Smith. They left that part out. What? They left that that. part out, evidently. I always add that. I wish I could go back to Relief Society because I would say, oh, you mean Eliza R. Young uh, Smith or Snow Snow. Young Smith, right? Yeah, they never use all of her last names. I wonder why. Um, she penned a verse about the meeting because she was a poetess, right? She wrote, oh, my, fa-, you know, oh, my father, all those kinds of things. She said some sample lines are, oh, would she now her influence bend the influence of royalty, Messiah's kingdom to extend and Zion's nursing mother be. So saying if only Queen Victoria would join, that would do a lot toward getting people to convert, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. But but amazingly, everybody, anywhere you go, world leaders, you're just handing off the most important thing to you, and that's the Book of Mormon. It's pretty interesting. All right, next slide. I think it's Colch's turn to read. Oh, here you go. This is a stretch, but okay. <laughs> All right. After a concert in 1981, famous Latter-day Saint Polish pianist Vladimir, is it Jan or is it John yeah, Jan Kachansky? Jan. Jan Kachansky met Pope John Paul II and handed him a Book of Mormon. Wow, that would take some guts. It would take some guts. Yeah. In res- I mean, how did he get that close to the Pope? But in response, I, the Pope the said- the Mobile, right? Where he was oh, behind yes. glass, maybe. <laughs> yes. That's why they made the Pope Mobile to keep the that Book of is. Mormons out, not the bullets. Yep. <laughs> in response, the Pope said, this is a Mormon publication. Ah, yes. Beautiful young prophet. That. I don't know if that quote ages well, honestly. (laughs) Beautiful young prophet said by the Pope. I don't know which prophet is he talking about because none of them are young. Myth. No, I think he's talking about the history of yeah. But interesting observation. (laughs) I didn't quite know what to think when I read that, but yeah, you're absolutely right, Colch. That is that takes some nerve to walk up and you know, and and I know that the prophet President Nelson has had an audience with the Pope right around when mm-hmm. the Roman I know there's Temple. a picture of him. Yeah, um, there's a picture of that. Shaking hands. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think that he handed him a Book of Mormon. I think he was just kind of in a line of people. And But yeah, and I remember there were a bunch of, do you remember Landon? There were a bunch of quotes like, you know, which one has the real power? You know, there was some kind of yeah. ridiculousness mm-hmm. about him meeting the, yeah. And I'm guessing the Pope just went, okay, who are you? You're in, okay, nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. These world leaders. All right. Let's see who else we have. Oh, here you go, oh. Landon. Do you know who this is? Uh, Kelly Clarkson, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ever yeah. watch American Idol? I did. Yeah. Okay. Then you probably know how wildly famous she is. I thought this was a good one. After receiving backstage passes to a Kelly Clarkson concert in March 2006, All In podcast host Morgan Jones Pearson was ecstatic as she began brainstorming what she could give her music idol during her meet and greet. And that's when the perfect answer came to Pearson, a Book of Mormon. 
Well, I didn't understand oh. everything in the book. I knew that it had helped me in my life. And I remember thinking that if it had helped me, maybe it could help Kelly too. Pearson says, I felt like it was really the only thing I could offer her that she might not be able to get on her own. So I wrote my little teenage testimony on the inside cover and wrapped it in tissue paper. Oh, and I'm sure I, I did read the rest of the story and Kelly did accept it graciously. And then later, another fan came up to uh, Morgan and she was in tears and she said, I'm also LDS. I never would have thought of doing that or been brave enough to do that. You mm -hmm. really, really inspired me that you you know, we're able to give that. And that does take some nerve. I mean, it's a very personal thing to hand over. And whoever you're giving it to, they could react negatively. You don't know. So I thought this was pretty good to go meet your idol and actually hand him a Book of Mormon. And Kelly was very gracious about it. I mean, I, again, don't know. Did she read it? We don't know. She received it. We mm -hmm. can check that off. But we don't know if she read it. We have no idea. And I don't think that she joined the church. We keep saying that about every slide, don't we? <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Seems to be a theme here. <laughs> well, it makes you wonder about the 200 million or whatever. You know, how many got one? How many joined? We don't know. Oh, okay. This is a big one. So um, after receiving permission from her mission president to watch her brother play in a high school football game. Okay. So she's on her mission and she gets to go kind of off the grid to a football game. Sister Atilacola and her companion, Sister Ardalyn, learned that Snoop Dogg's son also played on the team. So at the game, these two ambitious missionaries went on the lookout for Snoop Dogg and managed to snatch a candid photo of the rapper with the Book of Mormon. Now, what's interesting is that there was a rumor somebody like photoshopped a Book of Mormon with him like years before. So there was already a rumor going around that Snoop Dogg was a Mormon. Had you guys heard that? There's always those rumors. No. In this case, the missionary, yeah, he's like, no, the missionary. It's funny when there's a rumor about somebody like that, you start looking through his lyrics going, oh, that might mean that he, you know, but then these sisters actually did go um, search him out and it looks like he's just posing with it. Again, it does not say he accepted it, does it? He just took no. it here. Take a picture with my book, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but this pretty much went viral everywhere. And I don't, I don't think he's read it. I don't think he's joined. Any thoughts about Snoop Dogg? <laughs> well, no, Snoop Dogg's I'm, awesome. I just don't think that, he, yeah. and like, he's cool enough that he would take a picture with them exactly. and probably be cool yep. about it. Yeah. But I don't think, I don't think he took it. Yeah. And if he did, I'm guessing he didn't read it. Yeah. Is, is that a Bishop Gorman? Uh, shirt is that the team because uh, that, yeah I that's in a, uh isn't that las a catholic, vegas isn't that a catholic school so oh, sister, sister otokolo's brother plays on a on a catholic team evidently oh maybe or Boy, goes to a catholic school. investigate it i mean it's, I it's a high school team so it could yeah, be like it's a, a high private. school it's a private yeah I, it's a private school i think it's a private catholic school I, i'm not positive but bishop gorman sure sounds like a catholic school yeah Mm -hmm. uh, I don't be, know. We'll, we'll never well known, know. But we... It's a well-known team, very famous uh, for recruiting from everywhere. Huh, mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, but there's Snoop Dogg. He looks pretty happy to be with the missionaries. Everybody's given a thumbs up and he's got a Book of Mormon. All right. Who else? And I think it's Colt's time turn. Oh, here we oh, go. Here we go. Gladys Knight not only received the Book of Mormon, she also joined the LDS Church. That's right. We can check, check, check. Yeah. And I do not know the story completely. I believe that most of her family, a lot of her family were LDS. And it was just kind of a natural step that she too. Oh, but wow. yeah, she's an active Mormon. And I do remember reading when she first joined, she said, oh, I'm, I'm meeting with upper leadership. We're going to change the music. Like she recognized right away that <laughs> ah, needs some help. So, and it's it is changing slowly. We have a few songs that just came out for the new hymn book and they're going to kind of trickle out and then that'll be done in like 2026. But yeah, she right away recognized we got to change this music. We got to get some praise music in there. So mm -hmm. she's a good, but she's an, ex she's an example of, you know, a celebrity who does join mm -hmm. and immediately gets scooped up, yeah. you know, by the higher ups. They yep. have her come and sing it, you know, things at the like what is she sung at like yeah, well the things, b1 concert is a huge one things? back yeah back in 2018 she led a huge choir um to celebrate the lifting of the priesthood ban and mm -hmm. she i believe is also sung like a president nelson's birthday i don't know that for sure but i know that she does do events and she does stuff with mm -hmm. the tabernacle choir so you're right she's definitely i would consider mormon celebrity royalty i think yeah yeah for and sure. this this would be a big get because you know, just with the history with African Americans in the yes. church. Yes. So to have someone who is African American mm -hmm. and of this fame level that yep. you can like 
come out as a spoke per- spokesperson in your mm-hmm. favor, that's a big thing for the church. It is a big thing. Yep. What do you think, Landon? Have you ever that's heard her? De- definitely a coup. Yep. To, to sweep her <laughs> up. But they'll bring her and uh, they do that, though, with any celebrity. As soon as there's any yeah. celebrity, mm-hmm. they immediately grab them, put them on front and stage and yep. and use that publicity for everything they can get out of it until, like Rebecca says, if they leave, then all yeah. of a sudden they're dropped like a hot potato. No mention of them ever again. They take all all their songs out of Deseret Book or anything yep. mm-hmm. done and yep. uh, put it on the on the fire heap uh, as if they never existed. Yeah, no, and they, I mean, they're quick. I remember, and I still can't think of the name of the NFL player, but somebody got baptized. One of his teammates baptized him. He's a very well known NFL player, except for to me, a couple years ago. And I saw the article, you know, he just announced he got baptized. I went over to Wikipedia to this player's page, and it already said he is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Like somebody <laughs> went in there. I'm guessing it wasn't his people. Somebody mm-hmm. put that in there. Yet they don't take things out um, that are good PR that should be taken out that maybe have now turned, you know, like I haven't looked at David Archuleta's page, but, you know, I don't know if it says he's still a member or not, but they're definitely working that publicity angle, I think. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Who else do we have? Oh, this is a good one. Landon, do you want to read this? You love Abraham Lincoln. That's right. Although the 16th U.S. president met Mormons when they had their headquarters in his home state of Illinois, He obtained his copy of the Book of Mormon by borrowing it through the Library of Congress. (laughs) This is true. On November 18, 1861, the executive mansion borrowed the Book of Mormon and several other texts on the religion. The Book of Mormon was kept for eight months before it was returned, but there is no definitive proof Lincoln himself read or studied it. Historians note, however, that Lincoln was considering a new appointment of a territorial governor in Utah at the time and was weighing the territory's latest application for statehood. Hmm. That could explain it if he was trying to learn more about Utah or the faith. And then, of course, you have other, his son had died just prior, I believe they said, to him borrowing this book. So some people spin it and say, oh, he was looking for religious solace, you know. And then you have the whole angle, what do Joseph Smith and Abraham Lincoln have in common? People work the Abraham Lincoln angle mm-hmm. a lot yes, with do. joseph smith have you come across that cult it's interesting yeah tim didn't, ballard didn't tim ballard, i was gonna say tim ballard yeah. wrote an entire yeah. book yes yeah you know, trying to connect him to yep. the mormon faith and yep. and abraham lincoln uh did join the church uh posthumously remember oh, they, all the all the presidents have now been <laughs> baptized multiple for, times multiple for one times. yep so yep that's he was thing. one of the ones that appeared to, which prophet was it? Was it Lorenzo oh, Snow gosh. that they all appeared yeah. to and said, do our he temple said, work? Baptize us. Yeah. Yep, that's all the normal point. people who were dead didn't come, but all the no, important the people. Yeah, all the important people. The celebrities yeah. show up even in death. That's right. Well, you know, it's hard to take a name to the temple. That's why Hitler has actually been baptized, I think, like 12 times or something. Multiple like, times. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot. Well, he so. probably needs it. Oh, multiple oh, okay. times, Good. yeah. <laughs> but you, Landon... Because you had a frappuccino yesterday, yeah. you'll not be in the celestial kingdom with Hitler. You will be somewhere else. Well, that's right. Uh, and, and good riddance, Hitler can stay in the celestial kingdom and do temple work all day long. <laughs> that's the hell he deserves. <laughs> uh, yep, Landon's, Landon's drinking telestial, and so that's, that's where right. he's going to be. Drinking telestial. I guess we shouldn't joke about that. All right, let's see who else we have. Oh, okay. I'm glad this is mine because I can speak to this. Did Steve Martin receive a Book of Mormon and join the LDS Church? In the early 90s, this was the rumor. Steve Martin has joined the LDS Church and it spread like wildfire. And I'm one of the ones that started it inadvertently. I'm going on record now that I think it was me. And I've told this story before. I worked at BYU. I worked in a department with other librarians and somebody had a daughter on a mission in LA. And the daughter wrote a letter to this woman in my department that said, we tracked it out, Steve Martin. We gave him a Book of Mormon. He's really interested and he's going to be baptized. And so she read that letter. It spread like wildfire around our department. I mean, this is really before email. It was like a letter, letter. Mm -hmm. And we were so excited. I told two friends. Who told two friends? We all love Steve Martin. I mean, it just went, right? And then We get the next letter from the daughter and it's like, ha ha, his name is Steve Martin, but it's not the Steve Martin, but we do have somebody that's going to join. 
by then it's too late, right? You have like 20 people in this department that have told all of their friends and family that the Steve Martin is going to join the church. So it's all, mm-hmm. it's a meme at this point. People always joke. He himself addresses it, you know, in different things that he talks about. I'm not a Mormon, but, and I don't know for sure that I did help start the rumor, but I do know that the missionary wrote that she tracked it out, Steve Martin, and a lot of people heard it and went and told people. So I don't know. It's a wild and crazy story. Yeah, it's a wild and crazy story. <laughs> That's exactly right. So I remember Steve hearing Martin. this in high school. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. That that would have been about that time. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. No, that would have been it. So yeah. So, and I think that some of these rumors of people that are Mormons still exist. People still, you know, because again, it's that there's this, there's this thing about Mormons where they just want to align themselves with celebrity. And I think it's just a confirmation that you're correct and you're doing the right thing. And you're part of a amazing organization. If you can find somebody else that is also joined, you don't Mm -hmm. ever celebrate or talk about the people that have left. It's always the people that have joined because they've seen what you saw and, and they're celebrities. And I, I have a friend who Grew up in the upper echelon of Mormonism, a very close, immediate family member of a prophet. And she said, back in that day, the upper leadership was obsessed with the Osmonds, obsessed with any kind of celebrity on the national stage, inviting them to things almost like giddy about it, that you wouldn't think someone who was an apostle or a prophet talking to God would be so starstruck over these people. But she said they were almost embarrassingly so. So well, that's kind I, of I think they paid off the more the Osmond's home. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And and I'm sure they were considered that they were doing missionary work because they were. If you ask somebody back mm-hmm. in the day what's a Mormon, oh, it's that Donnie and Marie. You know, I don't know how many Mormon celebrities there are like that now that everybody knows is a Mormon. You most often see cases where who was a Mormon, right? Have you seen those? Mm-hmm. those yeah, they you know, never Ryan promote Gosling those Ryan people, Reynolds, though. You know? Yeah, there is a Ryan Reynolds. One of them was a Mormon. You know, you see this list of people that have some connection in the past to Mormonism and they're they're not part of it anymore. So anyway, sorry to break it to you. Steve Martin is not a Mormon. There you go. Bummer. Bummer. All right. Oh, here's a good one, Colts. This is kind of a serious one. All right. Uh, so how would a person somewhat famous for his heavy drinking react when given a Book of Mormon? With a toast, of course. A, th- a three-member delegation of Latter-day Saints visited his estate in 1954 to offer him, as thanks for his service, a leather-bound triple combination. So that's even better. He got wow, a triple. Got all of them. Really? Um, Winston Churchill, who saved the world, gets a triple Yeah, that bought him a triple instead Thank of just you. a Book of Mormon. Okay, he okay. Got it was DNC, a triple. All right. And right. Pearl a great price, Rebecca. <laughs> That's what he okay, gets for winning right. the war. <laughs> I take it back. I take it back. Uh, Churchill welcomed them, offered them drinks, which I'm sure they said no thanks, and exchanged pleasantries, the LDS Church News reported. Churchill thumbed through the volume and thanked the givers by raising his glass and making a toast to their good health. Oh, that's how it should be. I think that's excellent. This is a great picture of him. Yep. He was just fabulous. So, so again, we can confirm he received a Book of Mormon, thumbed through it. Don't think we probably ever read it. And certainly I don't believe joined the church, but again, everybody that's passed away that we're talking about here, we can pretty much safely assume, wouldn't you say that they have Mm -hmm. had work done for them in the LDS temples. And so they have the option to decide to be a part of the faith. I think, Mm -hmm. I think we can safely assume that. So they'd probably say that these experiences were laying the groundwork for them accepting in the afterlife. Yeah. He would probably say of the 200 million copies, never have so many been given to so few who cared so little. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. There you go. That's the title of our thumbnail. I'm calling it here. Never have so many given to so few who cared so little. Uh, Leave it to Landon. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's go to our next one. I think it's Landon's turn. Oh, here we go. Some more world leaders. When Jackie Kennedy announced plans to begin building a library of first editions for the White House, Congressman Ralph R. Harding uh-huh. knew he had a book to contribute that had value beyond measure. In the summer of 1962, Harding met with President Kennedy amidst the vivid flowers of the Rose Garden to present him with a first edition 1830 Book of Mormon. Along with this priceless gift, Harding gave President Kennedy a brief history of the church. A brief history up to 1962. That's great. So I'm guessing they're saying that is in the Kennedy Library then. Yeah, I I think yeah. he 
didn't he and Marilyn Monroe read it together? Um. <laughs> well, there is that. Yes, I'm sure they thumbed through it together. That would be it. Yeah. He might he might have liked DNC 132 a little yeah. bit better. <laughs> if it was a triple look, Marilyn, here you go. Yeah. Oh gosh, what an era. That was a different day, wasn't it? So so we know that uh, President Kennedy was given a Book of Mormon, you know, didn't I don't know that we know that he re read it, and I don't think that he joined the church in his lifetime. However, as we said, probably now, right? Somebody's probably done the work for him. Yep. Okay. And Harding was an LDS, hardcore LDS senator. Of which state, Landon, do you remember? I I do not was know. Was it Utah? Yeah, I don't uh, remember either. Could, could be, I, I'm not sure where he came from. I can look it up. Oh, what? Uh, pro oh here we go. Okay, so this is going to tie right into our temple building. And then you're going to have to excuse this cult because we're going to go on a, like a two hour rant and then we'll get back. No, we won't. Okay. So this is Ted Kennedy. When Boston mission president Frank Manson asked whether Senator Hatch would recruit Ted Kennedy to give a joint fireside to the missionaries, Senator Hatch decided he'd give it a try. Senator Hatch and Senator Kennedy were friends and they did work on many different bills together. Um, Senator Hatch chose his moment with diplomatic wisdom, approaching Senator Kennedy late one night when he was in good humor and a little tipsy. And Smart. So, this is, yeah, this is from a memoir, Remembering Ted Kennedy. <laughs> so that's how you get people to join and to do things. You come across them when they're inebriated, and then you ask them what you need. Um, let's see. When asked if he would be willing to speak to over 200 missionaries, Senator Kennedy said, done. There you go. And hopefully he remembered it in the morning. After <laughs> receiving a letter about the fireside the next day, Senator Kennedy had to have a little chat with Senator Hatch just to see if there were anything else that he had agreed to the night before. He said that Ralupi <laughs> law that we just set in that front of you. Is what I'm, <laughs> this is what I thought when I read this. Because if you followed this culture and others, back in 2000, Senator Hatch got Senator Kennedy on board with this um, Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act. I will correct myself. I keep saying incarcerated, um, which means, you know, that religions can build whatever the heck they want. This is how a lot of the, the church is interpreting. It's supposed to protect smaller religions who might be discriminated against, but the church is using mm -hmm. this in every single one of their towns to say, nope, because of this bill introduced by Mormon senators Hatch, Bennett, and Smith, with the blessing of Ted Kennedy, they are they put it in place two decades ago to be able to use today against small towns and their zoning ordinances. Um, so yeah, I feel like maybe Hatch did approach, if that's his MO, approach Kennedy when he was tipsy and say, hey, there's this law I want to pass. It's going to help the church in the future. Trust me. It might be what happened. So yeah, you, you always hear the church lawyers say he reached across the aisle. I think he reached across the bar and said, "Ted, he across, Ted <laughs> come on, yeah." No, we and buy I can a drink, see why, Ted. Why, exactly. I can see why Ted would go along. On paper, it sounds great. Yes, let's protect religions who might be discriminated against. That's what it's for. It's to protect a religion that wants to build something. And if there's a town that's biased, they can't stop them. But it does not give a church, any protections over completely obliterating the zoning laws that are in place and the ordinances by the town. So, and it's always fought out in the courts, which is why the church continues to use it. But so interesting mm -hmm. to see this little history here of how yeah. the relationship between Hatch and Kennedy. It's really surprising that the church's lawyers in Las Vegas didn't donate Book of Mormons to the city council as opposed to $10,000, since that would yes. have a positive effect. And I did yeah. find out Harding was from Idaho. Yeah. And that's what I was guessing because okay. I think we were contacted by one of his kids that's when we right. were talking. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. In one of our other episodes that said he was an awesome guy. Um, let's see. Okay. The answer was yes. Senator Kennedy had promised not only to speak at the fireside, but he had promised to secure Boston's historic funnel hall as the location. So this was a big deal. I wonder if we have any viewers that were actually at that. Some of our viewers might have been of an age where they might have been on a mission in the 60s. I don't know. Senator Kennedy delivered on both his promises, giving a stirring speech at the beautiful assembly hall. When asked if he had ever received a copy of the Book of Mormon, Senator Kennedy replied, no, but I bet there's a copy on my desk Monday morning. So there you go. So it sounds like Hatch didn't give a, a Book of Mormon, but just wanted him to address the missionaries. I'd be curious to see what he said. Yeah. What did he talk about? 
yeah, what did he talk about? It's it's a really interesting story, you know. So yeah, he's interesting. Catholic, yeah. so. And we're pretty sure he's not a yeah, exactly. Pretty sure he's not a Mormon. So all right, cult, let's talk about um Ezra Taft Benson and who he gave a Book of Mormon to and his, his ETB. All right. Yeah. Uh, during a visit by the Soviet premier to America in 1959, U.S. Agriculture Secretary Ezra Taft Benson, who was then also a Latter-day Saint apostle, hosted him part of the time. When the conversation turned to Utah and the then named Mormon Tabernacle Choir, Benson's son Reed offered the family copies of the Book of Mormon in Russian. Mm. Um, Khrushchev's son-in-law gave Reed an address where six copies were delivered, according to the LDS Church News. Wow, that's fascinating. Given Benson's uh, relationship with Russia, oh, he, and he hated communism. communism. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he thought uh, giving those Book of Mormons would bring down the red curtain. Yeah, maybe there were a lot of things delivered to Khrushchev that never, uh, you know, kind of disappeared. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't know wow. what that means. <laughs> I, I don't either. I don't think we should go there. Somebody might be listening still. I'm not sure. It's still Cold War era sometimes in the church. But but just interesting that every single time there's an, an interaction between a church leader and another world leader, that is what they're handing over. And it really shows you that that is the representation of Mormonism. That's what they're handing out. Here it is. We're a religion mm -hmm. that's about a book, a signature book. That's only specific to our religion. And here it is. They do it all the time. And yet it never seems to work. But they're like, but maybe this time, this time it's going to work. And there's a chance. That's <laughs> right. That's exactly it. So, all right. Let's see who else. And I think it's Landon's turn. Oh, this is a great one. And I heard this story firsthand because I was in a choir with Alex Boyer. And this is a very inspiring, if not, I don't know, foolhardy story. Oh, my goodness. Go ahead, Landon. Ward mission leaders and local congregations often give copies of the Faith Foundational text to members with the challenge to give it away and report back the next week about how it went. Prominent Latter-day Saint singer Alex Boyer may have come up with the best such story of all time. The week after being given a copy, he was touring in England for a charity called the Prince's Trust. Prince Charles showed up and wanted to shake everyone's hand. Afterward, afterward as Charles headed to his helicopter, Boyer breached protocol by yelling for him to stop. As I reached for the book in my back pocket, security went crazy, assuming I was reaching for something more dangerous. I managed to get the book from my pocket and extend my hand to give it to him, Boyer wrote. He looked at it, brought it close to his chest, and said to me that he thought it would prove some interesting reading. Boyer added that no one in his congregation initially believed the story. That, I mean, what do you think about that cult that seems incredibly dangerous honestly a world yeah. leader reaching in a back pocket running toward him i can't believe yeah. that that he could have got himself in in major trouble doing that well, number one i'm like who is alex boyer i don't know who he is okay he's is, he's is a he famous famed? vocalist he's lds okay. he's lds and, yeah uh-huh and he performs and so he's like a gladys knight kind of a person okay. where, you know really well known and in, in musical circles in the church he's always performing at different things so you got to res one. Re you got to respect the courage for him to do that. Uh -huh. But the way he did it, you got to kind of understand the circumstances that yeah. reaching in your back pocket mm -hmm. is probably not a good idea. Well, yeah. and, and then when and he yelling, pulls it, stop. Yeah. yeah, and then when he pulls it out and says, "I have a bomb for you." Well, we're going to talk about <laughs> Cody Judy. I don't think I have a slide, but that's exactly right. And you are you too young to remember Cody Judy Colch? You too probably young. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was Howard W. Hunter giving a fireside at BYU. And suddenly somebody ran forward yelling, I have a bomb, I have a bomb, right? <laughs> and security comes in, everybody at the devotional starts singing, we thank thee a God for a prophet. I'm not sure how that would stop somebody, but they tackle him. His name was Cody Judy. His defense was, I didn't mean bomb, I meant Book of Mormon. I was trying to run up on that, which to me is brilliant, brilliant mm -hmm. defense. I was trying to run up on the stage you know, and hand the prophet a book of Mormon. So he ended up, you know, there were mental issues and, and, but yeah, it was a very dramatic uh, moment in the early nineties with that, you know, charging the stand and everybody's singing mm -hmm. and the prophet's okay. And I've got a bomb. So, so yeah, he did, he did, he claimed to have tried to give a book of Mormon, but I, I think he really meant was trying to disrupt things. So do you remember <laughs> that at all, Landon? Are you too young too? 
I remember the mental problems, but uh, I don't remember that. I thought that was the prophet, not the, not the bomber. Oh, so <laughs> no, no, he was doing a very nice devotional. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and I have to say, I was not there. I went to devotionals for a couple years, but I got so distracted and disgusted by all the back rubs being given there. Cause you take your mm. date and everybody's just like groping each other. And I always sit in the back and all I could see looking down at the whole Marriott center was just people you know, because that's what you can get away with, right? I'm listening to the devotional and now I can do it. You know, I'm just like, that's it. I'm out. I'm not going to go anymore. I've had it. Yeah. So it, that's oh, honestly the truth. I can believe it. All, all all the moral questions are laid to rest during a BYU devotional. Yeah. Anything you can get yeah. in is... is no, I mean, just absolute, just <laughs> intense back rubs. And I'm sure those of you that have been in singles wars before, you know what I'm talking about. It's like the only legitimate way you can touch your partner. So you're just like... You are rubbing it down. It's so distracting. Our sexual organs back here. We're good. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going for it. Yeah. <laughs> they need to read the Book of Mormon together and less back rubs. That's exactly right. That's it. Okay. Uh, let's see whose turn. I think this is our very last one. So this actually is the reason that I came up with this whole episode. That and the two millionth or whatever Book of Mormon because. This to me is just ridiculous. If you know who Jacinda Ardern is, she is the mm -hmm. amazing, amazing prime minister was of New Zealand. And she is an ex-Mormon, right? Mm -hmm. So like openly ex-Mormon. So what happens when President Nelson goes to visit her? So in his recent meeting in 2019 with New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, President Russell M. Nelson presented the prime minister with what? A book oh, of no. Mormon um, and spoke on a variety of important topics, including freedom of speech, religious freedom, social media, Internet security and the March 15th mosque shootings in New Zealand. If you remember, she was so instrumental in just handling it. Just, you know, she kind of took the national stage by her handling of that tragedy and just an amazing person. She's courageous, President Nelson said, adding the world will discover they've got a real leader here. It's an unlikely scenario, a young mother leading a, a great nation, a peacemaker, a policymaker, a consensus builder. We're very confident she'll have a great future. So, but again, she is a post-Mormon. She knows what the Book of Mormon is. She's been given a Book mm -hmm. of Mormon. She's grown up with the Book of Mormon. And it just seems really tone deaf to me. I don't know if it does to you to hand her back a Book of Mormon and look at her face. She's like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you I, think, I, this was, uh, and Nelson was getting in his reactivation hours. Yeah, <laughs> he was trying to reactivate her. I, I like what he says there. It's an unlikely scenario, yeah. a young mother leading a great nation, a peacemaker, a policymaker, consensus builder. In our church, she couldn't even lead a, you know, a group of, of anything. Yeah. No, she <laughs> so couldn't do anything. For Nelson, it's like, well, it's good that you could run a country because we wouldn't let you run a congregation, lady. No, you couldn't <laughs> officiate at a meeting. You couldn't preside at a baptism. You couldn't do anything. You could be a Relief Society president under the direction of the priesthood. But yeah, so she basically had to leave the church so that she could find herself in this incredible position. But yeah, I just thought that was really interesting that he would bring her a Book of Mormon. And and again, I'm she's very gracious, of course. But inside, I wonder if she's just like, God. But it does. It reminds me of mm -hmm. what you said, Colch, about his 100th birthday is coming up. And mm -hmm. he's asked everybody, I believe, to reach out to someone, right, who stepped away. That's what he yes. wants for his birthday. So that might. Oh, also yeah. Involve... He'd go after the one, right? He was uh -huh. making it the 99 yep. sheep and the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's that very disturbing graphic of I had to look at it twice. It's been posted everywhere. There's there, it's kind of an impressionist looking picture. And there's a sheep um, in the foreground. And then behind the sheep is. Jesus just running, but he looks, he's like this. Ah. I'm like, oh my God, it's terrifying. I'll have to link it in the show notes. It's supposed to be he's, you know, desperately seeking after the one as we all should for President Nelson's birthday, reach out to someone who may have stepped away or is having a faith crisis, give them a Book of Mormon. But mm -hmm. it, Jesus is like kind of this big burly in a robe. He's in action going, ah. Ah, you know, it's more like, kind of a like an incredible Hulk looking. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a weird picture. I'm telling you, I'm going to find it and put it in the show notes because, <laughs> but yeah, that is what President Nelson has asked for his birthday. So people on social media on more of the post side are like, oh, that explains why I've gotten so many notes, <laughs> so many calls <laughs> from people that I haven't seen for a long time. <laughs> 
I, I think he's I, gonna have I, I think he's gonna have a, a hundred hundred and seventy three foot candles for his uh <laughs> to, to commemorate the spire of the temples. The, the yes. spires, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Higher, brighter, that's it. That's the only way to do it. So, that's awesome. I don't know. Tall candles I mean, will become a part of our religious worship. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because he could have said, you know, I'd like everybody instead of their tithing this month to donate to a charity of your choice in honor of my birthday. You see that a lot of times I'll see Facebook posts. It's my birthday. Please, you know, think about donating to the Humane Society or if it were me, I'd mm -hmm. say the Society for Cats or, you know, cause I'm be slowly becoming a cat lady as I get older. Um, but yeah, no, he just said, reach, reach out and try to bring somebody else, a tithe payer back mm -hmm. to the church. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I know. Yeah. That's so terrible. I'm so terrible. But anyway, I'm just, you know, we all remember his 95th birthday, which was off the charts. And I don't know if they're planning something like that, because I think PR wise, I think they kind of had some blowback on that, that it was just too extreme and over the top and too much hero worship and not enough Jesus, you know. So but Rebecca, if if the stuff in Texas has taught us anything with the temple, the church is not afraid of bad PR. So okay. I think they're going to okay. go big right. for I'll, 100. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. That's it. At 100 years old, he is now officially the oldest leader of the church. We've never had anyone older. So, and that's saying something. <laughs> yeah. He's the modern day Methuselah. He's the modern day Methuselah. That's exactly right. So anyway, all right. I think we have one more slide just to kind of end on. And there were so many other stories that we could have picked up on. And I'm guessing our viewers and our listeners probably have heard faith promoting stories of other people getting Book of Mormons. I mean, this just, I believe, scratched the surface because, you know, it is the Mormon creed. You've got to share what means something to you. And you've got to give everybody else the Book of Mormon and, and bear your testimony. You know, even as a kid, even as uncomfortable, I used to be terrified of ever being asked. My parents would put me on the spot and I was just like, you know, I, I will confess something. I've never borne my testimony in a meeting publicly ever. I was always oh, wow. so terrified. I would not do it. And I know now that it was extreme cognitive dissonance, even from being a child, but I've never walked up to the pulpit. I've never borne my testimony. I've never said anything like that because I didn't believe even from a very, very teeny tiny little kid i just i didn't and i couldn't say it so but the rest not of you guys with your mom huh? whispering it in your ear not yeah, even no she never did whispering. that was back in the day oh. where they would pass the mic around you know oh. so my i would just die inside when my mom or dad would stand up <laughs> they'd stand up and wait and i do i was so embarrassed all the time about anything to do with the church anything. I just didn't want anybody to know I was a member. I was embarrassed by the name of the church. My parents would always make me say the whole thing back then. And, you know, I was just, I never honestly should have been in it, but I just, I didn't know that I could step away till I was like, you know, a grown ass woman at 55 years old, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you guys yeah. are missionaries. And you said, Landon, you were always really uncomfortable, you know, trying to put yourself out there like that. Yeah. I, I never enjoyed uh, giving Book of Mormons to anyone, uh, you know, to me, it was, well, this is my religion. And that's great. Uh, yeah. If they want to learn about it, they'll come yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but that's what I was sent for. So that's what I did. But uh, no, uh, we appreciate you, Rebecca, putting together this list <laughs> of Book of Mormon stories of the that's who's it. who of who doesn't care. Uh, that's but, it. Uh, it was <laughs> fun to kind of go through these these stories. Yeah, no, I thought so too. And just to see that, you know, people really did care and they really were giving something that meant something to them. You know, I think in some cases it was a PR or political move kind of a thing. But, you know, some mm -hmm. of them, it takes a lot of nerve to walk up to a celebrity and say, hey, here's a book that means something to me. So I will give them that. What do you think, Colch? Any final thoughts as we wrap up this uh trip through the Book of Mormon? No, I found it really interesting for people at home. I did not get to see any of these slides. So everything was a cold, you know, yeah. what do they call that? A cold something. Off the cuff. Um, this is how good culture is. We just said, show yeah. up, be there. We're going to talk. And he knows, he knows this stuff. So for me, it was really entertaining just to see. So if I had like a reaction, it was a genuine sort of like, right. oh my God, look at that. And I'd be interested for anyone who's watching if they know stories or they personally have given a Book of Mormon to some, yeah. throw it in the in the comments. I'd love yeah. to, to see what they have to say. Yep, I think so too. And I was hoping that this would jog some people's memory and go, oh yeah, I heard that this person, because you hear all those stories, so-and-so sat next to Mick Jagger on the plane or sat next to Alice <laughs> mm -hmm. Cooper. You know, it's always apostles 
I'm sorry. It must be in first class. You don't fly coach when you're any of those people, you know, yes. having these conversations and the conversation always trends and spins positively toward the church. You know, the hardened rock star recognizes, oh, there's some good there. You know, there, it's always that because you're not going to share anything opposite where the rock star says, excuse me, can I change seats? You know, it's yeah. not mm-hmm. <laughs> so maybe that's another episode, faith promoting rumors of, you know, people that met stars and tried to talk to them about the church. I think that would be a good one too. So mm-hmm. it's all about celebrity status. Well, excellent. All right. Well, we want to thank Colch for being with us very spur of the moment. And it's pretty late where you are. I mean, he's he's got a time difference of two hours. 1130. Yeah. yeah, he's a night owl. That's right. Get the family settled. Holy Ghost is going to sleep soon, Rebecca. That's right. <laughs> Glad that's we it. got this in before that. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. Late night podcasting. That's our motto. And thank you, Landon, again. Like they said, I just kind of threw this together and said, be there. Not everybody could even look through the slides at all. Not even Landon. So, <laughs> And like Colt said, everybody, please comment. Do you have any stories like this? Do you Are there some that we missed? Or do you have a personal story? Or did you run toward a political leader and yell stop and grab something out of your back pocket. Maybe it was you. (laughs) What lengths did you go to to share a Book of Mormon? I'm sure you guys have stories. I'm sure that you do. So yep. And please like and subscribe to Mormonish Podcast. And if you'd like to be made aware of when new episodes come out, you can hit that donation. Sorry, not donation, the notification bell. Oh my gosh, it is late night, isn't it? And of course, if you'd like to make a donation to Mormonish to help support us financially, we are now a 5013C. Yay. And we do have a link to donor box, which you it's very easy to set up either a monthly donation or just, you know, whatever you, you can give. It really does help support us so that we can continue to have culture on and bring you the awesome people mm-hmm. and the content that you love, right? <laughs> and we also have our link to our merch store for our Mormonish mugs and hats and all that fun kind of paraphernalia. If you'd like to deck yourself out and show your Mormonish pride, that would be amazing. And again, we'll just thank Colch and thank Landon and go ahead and pass out a Book of Mormon for old time's sake. Why don't you do it and write back and tell us how it goes. We'll see what happens. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time on Mormonish. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Mormonish. We really appreciate our listeners and would love to hear from you if you have a story you'd like to share. You can email us at mormonishpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and on our website, mormonishpodcast.org. And don't forget to look for us on YouTube and like and subscribe. Keep joyful, everybody.